Thank you. I'm excited to be here, and uh, I appreciate Ben and Missy always inviting me to be a part of their, their night of hope that they do back in our county and this here tonight. As you could see from this uh, latest testimony here, we can't give up. We can't give up on people. You know, my, my job is to help people and to be there. And I'll tell you, being sheriff is a very unique job because we're the only people in the criminal justice system that are involved from the very beginning to the very end. We have people that are out doing the investigations, we make arrests, we hold them in our jails, and then if, when the judge is, is done and pronounces a sentence, we see to it that the sentence is carried out. Um, and I'll tell you the other things about being sheriff there there is the tough part of being sheriff is looking into a mother's eyes and telling them their child is not coming back whether it's from a traffic crash whether it's from a drug overdose and we've seen too much not just in Mercer County but across the United States across the state of Ohio we've seen too many people die of drug overdoses I think sometimes they give up hope, their families give up hope, and um, we, we've got to give the people who are suffering from addiction hope. When we first built our new jail and moved into it in 2010, we were starting to see the opiate problem starting to come in Mercer County. We were struggling with it because it's a small county and who would have thought we would have the problems the cities have? And I remember I got a confession to make. I would walk back through the jail after we arrested people that were high and they'd be going through withdrawal. And I'd kind of walk through and go, well, that'll teach them. They won't do that again. And then they'd be in jail long enough where they would get through the withdrawal. They would start feeling better. They would start acting normal. And I come to realize pretty good people, pretty smart people, just like the rest of us. And um, as I thought, well, they're gonna get out of jail now, we've got them through their addiction, they're gonna be fine. Well, they'd get out, and a few weeks later, they'd be back, and I couldn't understand it. So I started going back and talking to some of them and going, what's going on? They all have a different story for how they got, how they got addicted. Some of them, it wasn't their fault. Some of them went to the doctor because they were injured and they couldn't handle the opiates that were prescribed. Some of them made a bad decision, but which one of us has never made a bad decision in our life? Some of them by peer pressure. So as I got to talking, I started realizing, okay, this isn't something somebody's gonna get out of bed tomorrow. At least most people won't get out of bed tomorrow and go, okay, I'm not gonna do this again. We started bringing programs into the jail brought counselors into the jail, we brought faith-based programs into the jail, and we started trying to do things to work with the inmates and try to help them. And um, one of the things that I found, just like the mayor said from Kenton, the ones that I find that manage to, to I, I won't say beat the addiction, but manage to manage it and to stay clean for a period of time. And when I say a period of time, I mean two years, two and a half years, three years. Every one of them, when I see them, they have a faith in God. They have a faith in Jesus. They're talking about their church. It's amazing how they talk about their church and that relationship. And I think it's just very, very important that we recognize that and that any of the people that hear this, I want to play this tape in my jail once it's done. And anybody that hears this, hopefully they realize we haven't given up on them and there is hope and that hope is Jesus Christ. Thank you.